Hello, uh, this is Ted Hansen. Uh, thanks for visiting my data analytics portfolio on my Google site or on my YouTube channel. If you're here, you're one of a few different people. You are either a recruiter who found the link to my portfolio on my resume. Uh, you are somebody working in data analytics who found this on YouTube. You are one of my 37 subscribers from my Warhammer Online days. <laughs> or you are somebody who has going down the very weird side of YouTube. But no matter who you are, thanks for showing up. I appreciate the, the view. If you recognize the symbol in the lower right hand, that is the cyclistic bike share, that is because it is from the Google Data Analytics Career Certificate course uh, as a capstone project. So that's what this is for me. The object of the course is we're going to compare how the usage of bikes differ between members and casual users. This is based off of real data uh, from Divi by Lyft in Chicago. We want to answer the question about how and why to market annual memberships to current casual riders. You can see the links to the data and the license uh, at the hyperlinks below. The data is from December 2020 through November of 2021. If you would like a copy of the data uh, that I used, you can find that on the portfolio site. Uh, the presentation will also be included in the zip file. Uh, the data was cleaned and organized using R. There are some rules that uh, Divi uses to clean their data. I had to make sure that those were actually done. And uh, I also added that bikes that were simply docked from multiple days were removed. So in addition to the less than 60 seconds in length and the trips by staff specified on their website. The remaining data was then organized by rider type, which is do they have an annual pass or not, and the day of the week. I added the ride length, the day of the week, and the overall usage of the bikes. The ride length was calculated simply in seconds by the difference between the start and the end times. Now, when I went to go use that for the overall usage of the bikes, I converted it to hours instead, so we weren't dealing with numbers in the millions. <laughs> and so then we just took the average ride in hours and multiplied it by the number of rides uh, to get there. So this is Mike. Mike is our typical member. If you recognize the photo there on the right, that's because it's from the free stock images on Shutterstock. We're going to assume Mike uses our bikes regularly, otherwise why in the world would he have an annual pass anyway? We don't know much about him, so we're going to see what the data tells us. If this was an actual presentation, I would ask him, hey, what do you think we're going to learn before we even look at the data? And I would pull responses that way. We can play along with that on YouTube, pause the video, and put in the comments and see if you were right. And then we'd also meet Clara. She's our typical casual rider. Again, another free image off of Shutterstock. Thank you, Shutterstock, so I didn't have to go find random people, get release forms and all that. They made all that real easy for me. We're going to assume she doesn't use bikes as often as Mike. Otherwise, of course she'd have an annual pass already. But we're trying to figure out what would make her get one. We don't much know much else about her, so we'll dig into the data to find more about her again canvas the room what do you think we're going to find in the data before we even look at anything again if you want to play along pause the video go to the comments on youtube see if you're right later so we'll start off with really really basic stuff like how many rides do these people take so as we can see our typical member mike he takes nearly double the trips of a casual rider at least during the week and Clara, our typical casual rider, is going to take slightly more trips on the weekend. Now that two to one number of rides tells me that Mike's probably using this to commute to work. So, you know, you'll see him coming out of his apartment in downtown Chicago. He's got his work clothes in his hand. He goes, grabs, you know, the bike he's going to ride to work. He goes through the traffic on downtown, probably going faster than them because, you know, he's smaller. And then he arrives to work. He takes a shower puts his work clothes on, goes about his business. When he's done for the day, change back into his cycling clothes, bike home, and be done with the day. Clara probably just uses him to get around town on her days off. As they're mostly on the weekend, maybe occasionally during the week.
Now, one thing that might be surprising is that Claire's going to take far longer trips than Mike, despite having a shorter base trip duration before they get the per minute charges. Those are 15 minutes and 45 minutes, respectively. Take a look at Sunday for the casual riders over there in blue. They're approaching 1,800 seconds on average for their rides. That's 30 minutes. So we got to figure that Clara has gotten a little bit of sticker shock before seeing those per minute charges added. So we could use that to have her consider getting a membership to get rid of those overages charges because I don't like seeing those. Do you like seeing surprise bills at the end of something? I don't either. Another thing that's probably fun on here is that the average duration was shorter overall during the week, especially for the members. Mike was probably late for work a couple of times, so he just definitely can't have that happen again. All right, so this is the representation of the total usage of the bikes in ride hours. You know, they're kind of like man hours, except, you know, they're for bikes. And we see that during the week between Monday and Thursday, that uh, members and casual riders, their usage was about equal. That doesn't say much for Mike and Clara, simply because there's many more casual riders than members, obviously. And we do see that the casual riders use the bikes twice as often on the weekend. However, the reason I show this is has to do with the next slide. It has to do with bikes we have to chase down. So what this tells us is that our annual pass holders are much more careful about returning the bikes to a docking station than a typical casual rider. Now this is in spite of him using the bikes significantly more than a typical casual rider. We have to chase down four times as many bikes from casual riders than annual pass holders, even though that casual usage is equal during the week and only double on the weekends. So here's the big takeaways from everything here to summarize. Claire's going to rent bikes more on the weekend, slightly, uh, than Mike does. Claire will use the bikes for longer on each trip than Mike does. We know that the use between casual riders and members are roughly equal during the week, despite members taking more trips. And we know that members tend to take far better care of our bikes than casual riders, even though they use them far more often. So taking those away, what can we do to help Clara see the value of the annual passes? Well, here's what I would suggest. Let's introduce a weekend pass. It's gonna be priced below the annual pass, probably five to six dollars a month. That allows for the unlimited 45 minute rides on Saturday and Sunday only. Now, Clara would very likely see uh, value in that, especially because she has those longer ride durations. We see they were pushing on Sunday that 1800 seconds, 30 minutes. So imagine this, Clara's taking her bike out there, she returns it. Oops, we have an overage fee. What we can do at that point, kind of like with DoorDash, like they offered the Dash Pass and they waive some of their fees if you sign up for a Dash Pass when you place an order. We can do the same thing. We can offer her a weekend pass or an annual pass when she has an overage and offer to adjust the fee as if she already had it, if she does it when she checks the bike back in. And also on the other side of things, we want to reinforce the importance of returning the bikes to a station during the checkout process in the app. And you know, make sure we thank them for returning the bike to a station when checking it back in. And we can even you know, maybe offer incentives because we're having to chase down bikes. We're having to pay people to do all this. We can use that money instead to offer incentives to increase loyalty and uh, make sure that we get our bikes back so that we're not losing them. We're not having to send people after them. So at this point in the presentation, if it was real, I would ask for questions from the room. But since this is YouTube, we're just going to have to play this game in the comments. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the comments section.